Welcome to another production by the Millennial Mechanical Therapist. Your hosts, Dr. Joseph Gravino and Dr. Clay Case, are two physical therapists trying to treat health issues mechanically. Listen further for patient cases, guest videos, advantages and disadvantages of the way they practice, and much more. Thanks for tuning in today. Check us out on YouTube, Facebook, and at our website. We hope that you learn a lot from watching this video and you come back for more. Hello everybody and welcome to the Millennial Mechanical Therapist. Today we're going to talk about how MDT or Mechanical Diagnosis and Therapy is safe for all clinicians and in particular new graduates. Now we're going to hit a couple points today. One, history taking. Two, classifications. And three, force progressions or alternatives. History taking in an individual who practices MDT or an individual that doesn't really isn't that different. However, through the use of the mechanical ther diagnosis and therapy assessment form, as well as the training, all the, all the individuals who teach MDT really, really strive to have you focus on listening to the patient, trying to find things that make them worse, make them better, and little tidbits of info in their history that could give you a clue on whether that patient is, you know, actually mechanical or maybe not. The first thing that we want to know in all of our patients is, can I help you? Is this the right place for you? And really, MDT places a lot of, a lot of guff on that in, in the very beginning with all patients. And the assessment form really strives to have you lay out, you know, what's going on with this individual, what makes them worse, what makes them better, etc. So history taking can be huge. This month, March, the Journal of American Physical Therapy came out with an article by a couple physicians, and they, uh, they screened about 700 patients with low back pain. They found that out of that 700 patients, 6% had some sort of sinister pathology going on. That's 6%. Now, what's really intriguing was that they found the factors that that 6% really had in common were greater than 75 years old, a pain intensity of over 7 out of 10 on the VAS scale, some sort of history of osteoporosis or osteopenia, as well as trauma. To me, that's insane. That's freaking insane. That's got to be a quarter of most outpatient orthopedic therapists' caseload right there. Over 75, osteoporosis, and you have an intent, uh, VAS score of greater than 7. That's our bread and butter. That's who you see all the time. And these individuals, technically 5% of those that walk through your door with those categories could have some sort of uh, sinister pathology going on. So that's huge. That's why just taking good history can really give you some information. And MDT strives to make you think like that. They strive to make you understand that age is a, diag a prognostic factor for a sinister pathology. That if the better and worse sections don't make sense, maybe this isn't mechanical. And that leads us on to, if it's mechanical or not, then you should be able to classify them. So classifications. Classifications in MDT are derangement, dysfunction, posture, and other. Most commonly, you'll see derangements in your office. Now, the reason why the better and worse section is so awesome when taking a history and on the MDT assessment form is because that section really gives you an idea of, has the patient found a uh, direction of preference or a direction of vulnerability? Have they found positions and movements that make them worse, that make them better? Does it take time for their pain to come on? Or is their pain horrible in all situations? That really gives you a good idea of Again, is this mechanical or is it not mechanical? And that's really what you need to figure out on day one. Can you help this patient? Can you not help this patient? Is it safe to treat this patient? Further classifying patients allows you to find what they respond to, if they respond at all. And if they don't respond, maybe this isn't an individual that you should be treating. Especially if we go back to the history form and we're seeing things like unexplained weight loss, age over the over the age of 55 trauma in the near in the past history or some sort of uh, some sort of trauma or maybe a, a surgical uh, situation that happened within the last six months or so so classifying patients can be huge and even with classifying patients you can find you know breakdowns in where people thought people were class uh, a syndrome and really turned out to be something more sinister I think one one thing that came to mind was this past February 
there was a, a musculoskeletal imaging article done in JOSPT about an individual who was in a car accident and had local low back pain after the accident. What they found was after about two weeks of failed PT and progressively worsening symptoms, as well as a sudden onset loss of bowel and bladder fun dysfunction, they uh, did a couple imaging and found that, indiv that individual had multiple myeloma that was in his spine. That's insane. That individual probably wouldn't have been in, in a therapist's office if it wasn't for the motor vehicle accident. And luckily, that therapist had uh, a very smart ther uh, therapist who could progress him on out and knew that they weren't, they weren't the individual to be treating him. That's why history taking and trying to classify your patients can be so huge. If the history is making it sound like that individual may have a lot more going on that's just musculoskeletal, and as you're making the, the patient go through repeated movement testing, repeated postures, force alternatives and force progressions, which we'll get to soon, and they're not responding to anything or everything makes them worse, then you're probably not the individual that needs to be treating them or be assessing them. I would go further on forced progressions, but I'm, I'm running a little late. So what we're going to do is I'm going to ask you guys to uh, find us on uh, social media. Go back to our website. Um, look, we'll have a couple of the links of the articles that I that I told you embedded in, in this video, as well as elsewhere, and, and even a uh, uh, an image of the MDT assessment form so you can kind of see specifically how it's laid out for you. So uh, stay tuned for about force progressions and why force progressions and force alternatives can help you make sure that you're treating the right patient and keeping your patients safe. Move early, move often, and move to end range because that's where the magic happens, friends. Thank you.